First I found the place. I wondered who had lived there. What their lives were like. Something whispered to my mind, and I began to write. My pen creates stories of a world that might have been a world of my imagining. And here's one I'm going to tell. But take care not to smile at any part of you. It begins with a stranger. Mr. Heathcliff? Mr. Heathcliff? You'll have to wait. You'll have to wait. Who are you? Lockwood, your new tenant up at the Grange. I'm surprised you chose a storm to go wander about, Mr. Lockwood. I lost my way out in the moor. Perhaps I can get a guide from amongst your lads. You could not. I'll go with him as far as the park. You'll go with him to hell. Mr. Heathcliff, if I am not to have a guide to take me up to the Grange, then I shall have to sleep here tonight. I don't keep accommodation for strangers. I'll sleep in the chair! There's a room we don't use. Don't leave it by the window. Catherine Heathcliff, Catherine Linton, Kathleen Edge. Let me in. The devil put you in there. The devil is right. Your face. She looked like... You should not have gone in there. Lockwood stumbled into the end of a strange story. A story that had begun years before when an old man returned to Wuthering Heights. Weary after a long journey. He's coming! Joseph! Right. <laughs> Don't rush me. Ah, oh, home again, Kathy! What have you brought me, Father? Kathy, give your father a chance to draw breath. You'll see. Wait and see. Oh, my lord. I found him, starving in the streets. He's a filthy gypsy, Father. He's a gift from God. You'd better treat him as your new brother. Where is my present? Doesn't he have a home of his own? He's part of our family now. This is your brother, Hindley. And this is your new sister, Kathy. Offer your hand. Earnshaw named him Heathcliff. You are an odd one. Don't you ever speak? Well, that's okay. I'll speak for the both of us. Aren't you coming? Kathy was drawn to the silent, self-possessed boy. But it was hardness, not gentleness, that kept him quiet. Nothing here belongs to you. Not now, not ever. From the first, Heathcliff was always more Kathy's brother than Hindley. Like <laughs> all wild things, she shared with him a love of the open moor, the rock, and the lowering skies. Though Heathcliff became Mr. Earnshaw's favorite child, his protection was limited by the length of the old man's life. <laughs> 
and will stay in the stables from now on. No! Heathcliff! <laughs> Morning, Kathy. It is as written within the sculpture Luke 65. But love your enemies, do well to them, and lend them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be the children of the Most High, because he is kind to the grateful and wicked. We must be kind to those who are ungrateful, for they are... As I was saying... We must follow within his holy words and his holy guidance. If we do not love our enemies, we must not falter or stray from the path, for he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Thou shalt not try to be ungrateful or wicked. What? Done already? When father was alive, we could play on Sunday. Why not just let them be, Henley? Put these two down to their scriptures. Be sure to examine them on it this time. Heather. Animal. Pepper. Pepper? <laughs> Pepper. <laughs> it feels like tree bark. Silver birch. Silver birch? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's warmer. <laughs> My turn. <laughs> Shame on you. Think of your souls. <laughs> What are you thinking about? I was thinking about the sea. Have you ever seen the sea? No, I was too little. I don't remember. My life didn't begin until I, uh, I, uh... Who sent you? Nobody. Was it a bird? Or a tree? No, a bird. <laughs> or the wind? <laughs> <laughs> no, a bird. I don't know. Do you know anything? Can you talk to trees? No. Can you talk to the wind? Let's send your spirit into that tree. Where? There. There? Make it talk to us. Talk to me. They're calling your name. <laughs> How'd you do that? I can do lots of things. What things? Stand up. <laughs> Where are you going? Come here. Close your eyes. If, when you open your eyes, the day is sunny and bright, so shall your future be. But if the day is full of storms, so shall your life. Now, open your eyes. What have you done? I don't care. Do you hear me? I don't care! Where are you going? To have a look. Come on! Sheltered in the valley, carpeted in crimson, the Grange, home of Edgar Linton and Isabella, his sister. Doesn't it make you wish you were adopted by the Lintons? I wouldn't give up what I had for a thousand lives. Especially not the Lintons. Make room! It's Catherine Earnshaw, sir. Catherine Earnshaw? Stop! Leave her! 
Leave her be! I think it must be Earnshaw's gypsy. Take him out? Kathy! Kathy! Look at the state of her. I will speak to Henley Earnshaw about it. Perhaps she should stay here for a while. How is she? Better, I think. The Lintons will be sorry to lose her. When is she coming home? Did she ask about me? Remember that Mr. Henley has forbidden you to speak with Miss Cathy when she returns. So she had no message for me. I think we'll all find her very changed. Thank you. Thank you, Henley. How are you? Much better, thank you. Nelly! Welcome home, Miss Cathy. Oh, Nelly! What do you think of her? She's quite the lady now. Where's Heathcliff? Heathcliff, you may come forward and wish Miss Catherine welcome like the rest of the servants. <laughs> well, Heathcliff, have you forgotten me? Shake hands, that is permitted. <laughs> I shall not stay to be laughed at. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to laugh. But look at you. Get that gypsy out of here. <laughs> the worst thing about you is that you never see anyone else's obligations. Oh my god. They looked after me for three months. I found a lapwing's nest at Peniston Crag while you were away. I waited every day for a sight of you coming over the moors. But you didn't come, so I... 
put a wire mesh over the nest, and all the little ones died when they hatched. Why? Because the parent birds couldn't get near enough to feed them. No. Why did you starve them? Well, there wasn't any point keeping them alive to show you. If you'd have come back, I'd have spared them. In the future, you must spare them. Don't you trust me? Don't you know I'll always come back? Don't you know that? Heathcliff. Always. <laughs> In giving birth, Sarah, Henley's wife, died. And Henley's sorrow was of the kind that could not weep or pray. Without her life, lost all interest in his own. Name the child. Hatton Anjou. Hareton Ernsaw. I baptize thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You will receive this child with honor, so that he shall follow you in all places. Wherever he may go, never let him fall into the sin of the world or the devil. What have you got that silly frock on for? We're still in mourning, Miss Cathy. Shouldn't you be back in the fields now, Heathcliff? Found it. Edgar and Isabella Linton said they might come this afternoon. Catherine? <clears throat> the crosses are for the days you've spent with the Lintons. The dots are for the days you've spent with me. Here, see? I mark every day. Hmm. Very foolish. As if I took notice. Where's the sense in that? To show that I do take notice. Oh, I see. Should I always be sitting with you? It might be dumb for anything you say to amuse me. You've never told me before that I talk too little. Or that you dislike my company, Cathy. It's no company at all when people know nothing and say nothing. Mm. Nelly. Oh, Kathy. <laughs> I thought you were Sarah come back from the dead. Nelly, will you keep a secret for me? <laughs> Is it worth keeping? <laughs> Today, Edgar Linton asked me to, to marry him. Wow. <laughs> How should I answer? Uh, really, Miss Cathy, how should I know? I accepted it. Oh, Cathy, do you love Mr. Edgar? Of course I do. Of course. I can't help it. Why do you love him, Cathy? Um, because he's handsome and pleasant to be with. <laughs> Bad. Because, um... He's young and cheerful. Bad still. And because I'll be rich, and I shall be the greatest woman of all the neighbourhood. <laughs> Kathy, Is that really what you want?
Well, marry Mr. Edgar, then. Where's your obstacle? Here, in my soul and in my heart, I'm convinced I'm wrong. And if my brother had not brought Heathcliff so low, I shouldn't have thought of it. It would degrade me to marry Heathcliff now. So here, he'll never know how I love him. My great miseries in this world have been Heathcliff's miseries, and I watched and felt each from the beginning. My love for Lintin is like, like foliage in the woods. Time will change it, as winter changes the trees. I love Heathcliff. He's the, he's like the eternal rocks beneath the, a source of little. Visible delight, but necessary. Nelly, I am Heathcliff. Master Hindle, Shh. Master Hindle. Why? It's Joseph, and Heathcliff might be with him. In fact, I'm not sure he wasn't here earlier. Young devil of a gypsy gets worse and worse and worse. He's left the gate open and took off across the moors. No, go and look for him. Bring him back! What? No! Go after him! Do you think he heard? I think he heard something. What? What did I say? I think he heard the bit where you said it would degrade you to marry him. Oh no! <laughs> Kathy! <laughs> Come in, Miss Kathy, come in! I cannot live without my life. I cannot live without my soul. The Heathcliff of her childhood disappeared forever that night. She could not find him. As she recovered, she waited for his return. But he did not come. Eventually, Kathy turned away from her old life at Withering Heights. In marrying Edgar, she found a measure of happiness. Two souls as different as the moonbeam from lightning, or frost, or fire. But thoughts are tyrants that return again and again to torment us. Joseph! A person from Gimmerton wishes to see you, ma'am. What does he want? I didn't question him. I'll be back in a moment. It's not one of Henley's creditors, is it? No, sir. It's someone the mistress didn't expect. Heathcliff has come back! <laughs> Don't strangle more for that. I know you didn't like him, but for my sake you must be friends now. 
Shall I tell him to come up? You bring him up, Nellie. Catherine, try to be glad without being absurd in front of the whole household. Heathcliff is a runaway servant. Sit down, sir. Mrs. Linton has asked me to welcome you. And of course, I'm delighted when anything occurs to please her. And I also. Especially if it's anything of which I have a part. Where have you been these few years, Heathcliff? You seem to have done very well. Yes. Perhaps you came into your inheritance. Yes. You look very fit. Perhaps you've been soldiering and seen some service abroad. Yes. I shall. I shall think it a dream tomorrow. And yet, you don't deserve this welcome. To be absent and silent for two years. I heard of your marriage, Cathy, not long ago. I travelled here to simply have one glimpse of your face. I fought through a bitter life since the last time I heard your voice. And you must forgive my silence. For I struggled only for you. Where are you staying? At Wuthering Heights. Hinley Earnshaw invited you to stay at Wuthering Heights. It is I who invited him to stay. It appears Hindley mortgaged the property to cover his gambling debts. I was able to assist my old friend by taking up his notes. I am the owner of Wuthering Heights now. What do you mean? Hinley and Hareton are both dispossessed? It is our old home, after all where Cathy and I grew up. I have a particular attachment to it. Everything is so awake now. Do you remember how we pictured heaven? I remember how you pictured heaven. How did you picture it? With you. Whenever and wherever you spend time with me. Go away. I love you. When you went away, I removed myself from the heights. I rooted myself in his life, in the Grange. I cannot uproot myself again. Why not? I cannot. Let me kiss you goodbye. You won't drive me away again, Cathy. I don't want to. But let us kiss goodbye as Cathy and Heathcliff from long ago, and kiss goodbye to that time. All right. All right, we've put that time to sleep. When we meet tomorrow, we will be as we are right now. And I shall kiss you again. You shall never kiss me again. I love Edgar, and he is dependent on me. If you kiss me again, I would have to leave him. And I would not survive. The surest way to kill me is for you to kiss me again. You sent me away because you knew I wanted to be with him. I'll not believe this idiocy. You think you're in love with Heathcliff. I love him more than you ever loved Edgar. And he'd love me too, if you'd let him. I wouldn't for you a kingdom, then. He's an unclaimed creature. He's a fierce, vile, pitiless, wolfish man. It's not true. Heathcliff has an honourable soul. You think I speak from wicked selfishness? I'm certain you do. Good. Try for yourself. I'm done. Heathcliff, we've been quarrelling like cats about you. Catherine, don't. Let me go. <laughs> My poor sister-in-law is breaking her heart by mere contemplation of your physical and moral beauty, and she sulked since yesterday's walk when I sent her out of your company. Well, she wishes to be out of my company now at any rate. There's a tigress. 
Hmm, she's our brother's heir, isn't she? I believe Kathy has been painting a black picture of me. You mustn't imagine for a moment that she lies. I'm a villain. I'm only after your fortune. Devious! Who? Your worthless friend. What are you doing? What is it to you? I'm not your husband. You've treated me infernally. <gasps> infernally? And if you imagine I'll suffer unrevenged, you're a fool! I've treated you infernally. At least allow me to amuse myself a little, in the same style. Have you been listening, Edgar? You, sir. Leave my house immediately. If you delay, I will put you out myself. Kathy, this lamb of yours threatens like a bull. Nelly, fetch me the men. Their means, if you haven't the courage to attack him, apologize. Or allow yourself to be beaten. Kathy, give me the key. I said, give me the key. I wish you the joy of your milk-blooded coward, Kathy. A compliment to you on your tastes. Heathcliff, my love. Oh, I love you. 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 Kathy. No, I can't. I've been with Edgar. I'm with his child. I will marry Heathcliff. He's asked me. You're quite an ugly thing, Isabella. I can't comprehend how you believe Heathcliff would ever truly fawn at the thought of you. Well, he has, and he will. We are to be married tomorrow night. <gasps> With much class. He seeks only a fortune. But no matter. You'll not listen to me, and you will soon regret it. I shan't regret it. He is not hardened. He is gentle as the next one. You intolerable monkey. Be it so. I will not quarrel with you any longer. You are harsh and cold, Cathy. You care nothing of love unless it regards yourself. You speak as if you are royalty. As if you did not marry my brother for his fortune, as you claim Heathcliff to marry me for mine. Get out of my sight, Isabella. For the mere thought of you being in my presence unsettles me. And I do not wish to take any regard of your existence at this present time. Leave me. And Nellie, do not think of defending her, as she will learn on her own the nature of consequence.
I've seen her like this before, sir. She's making herself ill just to spite us. It could be dangerous with the baby do. Please, sir. Couldn't you just go and talk to her? Yes, you're right, Nelly. It was you that brought her back before, sir. When Heathcliff... I don't ever want to hear that man's name mentioned in this house again. Good night, Nelly. here now. Shh. Let me feel the wind that goes straight down over them all. No, Kathy. I wish I were a girl again. Laughing at injuries, not maddening under them. Why am I so changed? Look. It's my room. The candle in the window. You can't see the house from here, Kathy. Joseph's waiting till I come home. He'll wait a while yet. It's a rough journey, and a sad heart to travel it. And we must pass through Gimmerton Church to go that journey. We've braved its ghosts often together. We've dared each other to stand among the graves and call on them to come. Heathcliff, if I dared now, will you venture? He's considering. He'd rather I come to him. Slow, you'll always follow me. Heathcliff. <laughs> Kathy, it's okay, Kathy. That's a good girl. A little bit more. Mrs. Dean wishes to see you. How is Kathy? Miss Linton has had a little girl. So? The Linton estate belongs to my wife. You seem to forget that my brother is still alive. I have not forgotten for an instant. This young lady is looking sadly the worse for a change in circumstance. Somebody's love falls far short in her case, obviously. Her own. She hates herself, as you see. She degenerates into a mere slut. It was a marvellous effort on her part to discover that I did not love her. But at last I think she begins to know me. Tell your master, Nelly, that I have never in all my life met with such an abject thing as she. She even disgraces the name of Linton. Take care, Nelly. He wishes to provoke Edgar to desperation. I'll die first. The single pleasure I can imagine is to die or see him dead. There. That will do for the moment. <coughs> what will they name her? Kathy's daughter. Catherine. Catherine Linton. Hareton, I remember when this house was full of the sound of laughter, Mr. Hindley. Now there is nothing but the sound of bitterness and hatred. Stay where you are. You're not going yet. I said sit down. Nelly, I must see her. Try and understand. Kathy is very ill. Another encounter between you and Mr. Edgar will probably kill her. 
I must see her, Nelly. Kathy. How can I bear it? You and Edgar have broken my heart, and now you come to me as if you were the one to be pitied. I shall not pity you. You've killed me. Will you forget me? Will you be happy when I'm in the earth? Are you possessed with the devil to talk to me in that manner when you're dying? Can't you see that all those words will be branded in my memory, and eating deeper eternally while you're at peace? I shall not be at peace. I don't mean to torture you. Please, Heathcliff, do come to me. Please. Why did you betray your own heart, Cathy? You loved me. Then what right had you to leave me? The poor fancy you felt for Linton? Nothing that God or Satan could inflict would have parted us. You, you on your own will did it. I have not broken your heart, Cathy. You have broken it. And in breaking it, you broke mine. If I've done wrong, I'm dying for it. You left me too, but I forgive you. Forgive me. It's hard. It's so hard to forgive. I, I look at those eyes. Yes, I forgive what you've done to me. I love my murderer, but yours, how can I? How can I? She's dead. I've not <laughs> waited for you to learn that. Don't snivel before me. Damn you all. She wants none of your tears. She lies in peace now, Heathcliff. May she wake as kindly in the next world. May she wake in torment. I pray one prayer. I repeat it until my tongue stiffens. Catherine Earnshaw. May you not rest as long as I am living. Heathcliff, don't! You said I killed you. Haunt me, then. I know that ghosts have wandered the earth. Be with me always. Take any form and drive me mad. Only, do not leave me in this abyss where I cannot find you. Oh, God. I cannot live without my life. I cannot live without my soul. Before the spring was out, Cathy's brother Hindley followed her to the grave. He dragged himself into oblivion, leaving Harton, his son and heir, to try to wake some love in Heathcliff's embittered heart. Now, my bonny lad, you're mine. Let's see if one tree won't grow as crooked as another, 
with the same wind to twist it. So Heathcliff claimed the last surviving Earnshaw. As the father had used him, so he would use the son. I was looking for birds' nests. Eighteen years have passed. Catherine Linton, Kathy and Edgar's daughter, grew up within the confines of the Grange. Catherine! Catherine! Sheltered by her father, she never knew the nearness of the wild inhabitants of the Heights. Until today. Now, who's this? Can you tell? Your son. Yes, well, don't you recognize your cousin, Linton? Linton! <laughs> I thought you lived in London. Father sent me when Mother died. Well, have you nothing to show your cousin? Take her outside. I do not think my father likes you, Uncle. I imagine he thought me unworthy to marry his sister. What does that inscription mean? Some damnable writing. I can't read it. I can read it. I want to know why it's there. Can you believe in the existence of such a colossal dunce? Can't even read his own name. Is that your name? Herriton Earnshaw? My mother's name is Earnshaw. Didn't you know? Herriton is your cousin. How do you do? Father, guess who I saw today by the moors? Nelly has already told me, Catherine. Why do you forbid me to visit Wuthering Heights? Is it... is it because you dislike Mr. Heathcliff? Not because I dislike Mr. Heathcliff, but because Mr. Heathcliff dislikes me. He was quite pleasant, Father. Sit down. I have no male heir, Catherine. I'm certain that Heathcliff seeks by some means to dispossess you of your inheritance, and in that way, to revenge himself on me. <coughs> He's a diabolical man, Catherine. He will stop at nothing to bring down those he hates. She might have been living yet, had it not been for him. Dearest Catherine, why have you not come back to me? Every day I wait for you. My one waking thought has been of you. Perhaps my Uncle Edgar has forbidden your visit to Wuthering Heights. You must find a way of seeing me again. My life didn't begin until I saw your face. Why have you not come back to me? Catherine, I have waited so long. Now, sign it. Are you sick? No, I'm feeling better. Just a bit tired. Oh. Well, cousin, I'm here at your command. You look well, Miss Linton. Miss Linton? <laughs> Miss Linton. My father is gravely ill after fighting to come here because you begged me to. What is it you want of me? My house isn't stricken with the plague. Sit down and have some tea. <laughs> Miss, um, Linton, I, 
I give you what I have. The present is hardly worth accepting, but I have nothing else to offer. It is my son, Linton. What are you saying? Father wants us to be married. He knows Uncle Edgar won't allow it if he lives, but he's afraid of my dying if we wait. So, we have to be married tonight, and Father will be the master of the Grange. I'm not afraid of you. Give me that key. Help me! No one knows you're here, Catherine. I swear you will not leave this house until I am your father. The only father you will have in a day or two. Oh, you're not afraid of me. Your courage is well disguised. I am afraid now, because if I stay, my father will be miserable. Let me go home. His happiest days were over when your days began. He cursed you, as I did for coming into this world. Weep away, it'll be your chief diversion hereafter. Mr. Heathcliff, you're a cruel man, but you're not a fiend. If my father died before I returned, could I bear to live? I'm going to kneel here at your feet, and I won't get up until you look back at me. Don't turn away. Look. Have you never loved anybody in all your life, Uncle? Never? Keep your fingers off. Move, or I'll kick you. How the devil can you dream of falling on me? I detest you. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I've been waiting for you to come. Is it true you've married? I have. Are you happy? <coughs> yes. My fortune belongs to Heathcliff now. Tell me you're safe, that Linton will protect you. He will protect me. So be it. I'm going to go now. Father, no! What was she like? Who was who like? My mother. She was a wild, wicked slip of a girl. She burned too bright for this world. Am I like her? I see her mostly in Hareton. I've come to fetch you home to Wuthering Heights. I've found a new tenant for this house, and I want my children about me. Go, make yourself ready. I haven't been in this room since the night I returned. I 
I've made the sexton remove the earth from her coffin. Aren't you ashamed to disturb the dead? I disturb nobody. It gave myself some ease when I saw her face again. It is hers yet. Your son is dead. And how do you feel? How do you feel, Catherine? I feel and see only death. Come to the fire. You must be frozen. Get away from me. How dare you touch me? What I would have given my life for, one kind word when I was imprisoned. You kept off. Do you think I'm going to accept friendship from you now? I've only come into this room because I'm cold. What is it? My son's will. He left the Grange and all your personal property to me. Look where he signed it. Linton. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters now. There we are. Shh. It's okay. He's just like a cart horse, isn't he? He does his work and eats his food and sleeps. Do you ever dream, Harriton? I found out that I'm glad that I should like you to be my cousin. Harriton? Harriton! Do you hear? Harriton? Harriton? Go to the devil and let me be! No, I won't. You must listen to me. I'll go to hell body and soul before I look sideways at you again. You should be friends with your cousin. Friend? When she hates me. Thinks me not fit to wipe her shoes. It's not I who hates you. It's you who hates me. You hate me as much as Mr. Heathcliff does, and more. You're a damn liar. Why have I made him angry then by taking your part a hundred times? I didn't know you took my part. Mrs. Dean, hmm. please convey this gift to Mr. Harrington Earnshaw and tell him, if he'll take it, I'll come and teach him to read it. And if he refuses, I'll go upstairs and never tease him again. So you forgive me? You'll be ashamed of me every day of your life, and the more that you know me. So you won't be my friend? Mr Heathcliff, I want to make a small garden. There will be no gardens here. You shouldn't grout a few yards of earth when you've taken all my land. Your land, you insolent slut! You never had any! Then my money. That's enough. And Harton's land and his money. No. No, no, you must not speak to him so. If you strike me, Harriton will defend me. So you may as well sit down. You dare try to rouse him against me? You must learn to avoid putting me in a passion, or I shall really murder you sometime.
Come back and finish your dinner. Go home. You have other company. I don't know how you can bear to leave her. How can you defend him? He's robbed you of Wuthering Heights. Your name is above the door. It wouldn't matter. If he were the devil himself, it wouldn't matter. How would you feel if I spoke badly of your father? Heathcliff is not your father. He's my true father. It's a poor conclusion, is it not? My old enemies have beaten me. Now would be the precise time to revenge myself on their children. I could do it. No one could hinder me. But where's the use? Eat it while it's still hot. Oh, for God's sake, please don't keep staring like that. Turn around. Tell me. Are we by ourselves? Heathcliff. You've not had a Bible in your hand since you were a lad. Let me fetch the parcel. There's a strange change approaching. How do you mean, a change? It's been a long fight. I wish it were over. Kathy? Mr. Heathcliff? You'll have to wait. Who are you? Lockwood, your new tenant up at the Grange. I'm surprised you chose a storm to go wander about, Mr. Lockwood. I lost my way out in the moor. Perhaps I can get a guide from amongst your lads. You could not. I'll go with him as far as the park. You'll go with him to hell. Mr. Heathcliff, if I am not to have a guide to take me up to the Grange, then I shall have to sleep here tonight. I don't keep accommodation for strangers. I'll sleep in the chair! There's a room we don't use. Don't leave it by the window. Catherine Heathcliff, Catherine Linton, Kathleen Ernst. The devil put you in there. The devil is right. She said she had been walking the earth for 20 years. Catherine Linton or Earnshaw or whatever she's called. Your face. She looked like... You should not have gone in there. Will you come with me? No. To you I've made myself worse than the devil. Together, they are afraid of nothing.
they would brave Satan and all his legions. Three graves by a low wall, or the churchyard meets the open mall. A generation lost and gone, Edgar, Kathy, Heathcliff. May they sleep sound in that quiet earth. But country folk will swear on their Bibles that he still walks.